Governance Proposal 307 is live on the hub, but many people argue that this governance proposal and the connected project to that, Echelon, is a scam. And is this true? This is what we will elaborate in today's episode. So make sure to watch this episode to the very end. Three, two, one. Here we go! But before we dive deeper into the project itself and into the drama that took place on the weekend, let us have a closer look at the governance proposal itself. The governance proposal is governance proposal 307, and it's about match the external ECH incentives on the ECH Osmo pool. So the governance proposal itself is for me not problematic because it's just about external incentives. In case you do not know what external incentives are, it's very straightforward. So you know when you provide liquidity on osmosis, let's say for Osmo and Atom, you earn rewards in Osmo. And this is pretty cool, but there's also the opportunity to also get external incentives. So besides getting incentives or rewards in Osmo, you would also earn rewards in the other cryptocurrency, which is in this case ECH. And many projects do that because they want to incentivize users to bring their tokens over to Osmosis to have more liquidity over there. And um, how this actually works is you deposit uh, liquidity for, let's say, ECH and Osmo in this case, and then you would once you would um, earn rewards in Osmo, and then you would also earn ECH rewards that came, that will come out of a gauge. So this is very important to know, but this is what the governance proposal mainly is about. But why is everybody complaining now about Echelon, and why are so many people arguing that Echelon is a scam? Before we do that, though, one last thing. Let us have a closer look at what Echelon is actually all about. Echelon is a layer one in the Cosmos ecosystem. It is EVM compatible, so also Solidity programmers like Ethereum programmers, they can deploy dApps on top of Echelon. Also, Echelon is fully compatible with the Ethereum ecosystem, apparently, and it is also IBC enabled, so it's not a problem for um, for developers to get exposure to the Cosmos ecosystem. And now you might think, hey, this really reminds me of FMOS. And this is actually one of the things that many, many people argue. Because apparently Echelon is a copy, a one-to-one -one copy of FMOS. I really, really recommend to read this blog post here. Um, it's a very, very good blog post and you get a very good overview of what was happening on uh, the weekend but apparently echelon copied the paste uh, copied the entire code of fmos and um, also what they also did is that they basically copied the inflation and the parameters of fmos so the token inflation and the entire code is the same compared to fmos so this is one red flag and the fact that Echelon is so similar to FMOS leads us to the seven red flags and the seven red flags that make me believe that Echelon is clearly a scam and which is also the reason why we at Friends Validator will vote no with V2 on this governance proposal. But let us have a closer look at these seven red flags. And the assumption that Echelon is basically the same as FMOS is very, very justified because apparently they copied the code one to one from FMOS. Besides the general code, they apparently also copied the entire inflation. So Echelon ECH, the token of Echelon, has apparently the exact same inflation as FMOS, which is very, very weird. And uh, besides that, what I find so interesting is that um, the author of this Medium blog post argues that the team constantly talked about FMOS everywhere in the community, which is also a red flag. So all in all, apparently, Echelon is a copy-paste of FMOS and even though they copied the entire code of FMOS, they were talking about FMOS in a very, very rude way. Red flag number two, there is no token distribution of Echelon. Exactly. If we have a closer look at the Echelon white paper, we can see that Echelon explains the token inflation here, um, which are again the same as of FMOSs, but here are no precise data of how these tokens are distributed. And then some people ask about 
yeah, guys, how will these tokens be distributed? Because this is, of course, a very crucial aspect of tokenomics. And then they said that 150 million was used for initial liquidity and given out in a plethora of different incentives for Echelon. We are close to $1 million in total liquidity across chains and have two running incentives on our Osmosis LPs. And then the question again, okay, I get it, but I want a breakdown of how it was distributed. I don't care if it was a large or a tiny amount of incentives. And then they say again, well, we have around, I believe, 40 million left in delegation. So 110 millions between BSC, multi-liquidity pools, ETH, and so on and so forth. But in a nutshell, it means that we do not know anything about how these tokens will precisely be distributed. And they mentioned here that these kinds of tokens are um, used to provide liquidity and um, to bring more liquidity to the different chains. This sounds in the first place somewhat cool, but the problem is that also means that the Echelon team is fully in charge of all the liquidity and can do an instant rug pull. So this is clearly another red flag. Red flag number three, creating fake accounts of well-known Ethereum developers. And now we are really leaving the tip of the iceberg because now it gets very interesting. Apparently they created a fake account of this Ethereum developer called Lichi, who is very well known in the Ethereum space. And they created a fake account and pretended that they would be Lichi and then they spread it fake information and all of these things in the name of Ligi, even though uh, Ligi was not aware of that or um, even though Ligi is not at all connected to Echelon. And of course, this is a brutal red flag because this is obviously a crime if I pretend to be someone else. Red flag number four, bribing validators to vote on governance proposal 307 with yes. And now let's get to the part that really shocked me the most. We have a clear case of bribing here because apparently they went to other validators. They also posted this on Twitter. I believe the tweet is already deleted. But anyway, they said to all the big validators on Osmosis, hey guys, you have a big impact on the voting procedure on Osmosis. So you have uh, lots of influence. If you vote yes on governance proposal 307, we are willed to give you 1,200 USD in ECH tokens. And for me, this is a clear case of bribing. I know, I know, I know many validators have conflict of interest here and there because they also invest in projects in the early stage. But here we have the clear case of Echelon putting cash on the table and say, hey guys, you want this for us and then you receive the money immediately. For me, this is a clear case of bribing. Red flag number five, the founders are Anon, and apparently they were involved in many, many other crypto scams. Exactly. There are a lot of rumors that the people behind Echelon are scammers. So I have to mention here very, very clearly that this is not confirmed yet. We only know that the team behind Echelon is Anon, so we don't know who these people are. And apparently... Uh, many, many people claim that these kinds of people are well-known scammers, um, especially from the Harmony ecosystem. We don't know this. Again, it's not confirmed. But regardless of that, rumors like these are not good at all. Red flag number six, the Echelon team acts very rude and immature. And this is actually how the drama escalated completely on the weekend. Many validators reached out to Echelon and said, hey guys, under these circumstances, uh, we can't support the ecosystem anymore in what way whatsoever and said, hey guys, we will leave and we will also leave the Discord, for example. And then we saw responses also from the founder himself like this. I won't read this. Um, you can just stop the video here and read through it by yourself. But of course, this is a clear red flag in my book. Red flag number seven, an in-house token bridge. And this is actually what I found super interesting. So during my research, I went on the Echelon website, obviously, and then I read an ad or so saying, hey guys, you can also bridge USDC over to Echelon. And then I was thinking, if this ecosystem is so controversial, which kind of bridge collaborates with Echelon? 
The answer is no bridge is collaborating with Echelon. They have their in-house token bridge. And this is, of course, not a very good sign. Because if you have a look at Osmosis, for example, we know that the dominant and main bridge of Osmosis is Axela. And we all know the Axela team. We know that Sergey Gorbunov is the founder of Axela. And they have high, high expertise in the entire crypto industry. And even though the Nomad bridge got exploited, um, we also knew who the people were or who the people are behind Nomad. And uh, besides, shout out to the Nomad team. They are doing everything that is currently possible to, um, yeah, to get the funds back. But we definitely know who the people are behind Nomad. We know who the people are behind Multichain, behind Axelar, and so on and so forth. So we don't see a problem here. But in the case of Echelon, we have an in-house token bridge. And of course, many people would argue now, hey, there are many ecosystems that have an in-house token bridge. This is true, but let us have, for example, a look at the Harmony token bridge. Also, this bridge got exploited. But again, we know the people who work on Harmony. We know who the CEO is of Harmony. We know who the COO, the CTO is of Harmony, and so on and so forth. But we don't know nothing about Echelon. This is exactly why this is a clearly, a clearly red flag for me. These all are the reasons why we at Friends Validator will vote no with veto on governance proposal 307. But now let us know what you think of the governance proposal. Comment in the comment section below. And also, if you like this content, please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a like. This triggers the YouTube algorithm and leads to an atom pump on the other hand. And with that being said, guys, thanks for watching and I hope I will see you the next time.